today we're gonna explore the entire city of Aleppo and we're starting off at the citadel the grand citadel of Aleppo some of the statistics have mentioned that Aleppo and Grozny in Chechnya have been the most devastated cities in recent times uh, the older mosque and the grand mosque one on top of each other yeah you can play with perspective quite a bit here because this is actually grand it's way way bigger than cracked chevalier it's a complex it's not just a fortress it's a city within the city of aleppo and inside the souk of aleppo once a thriving place now completely devastated a lot of the fighting took place within the souk as well you know the guerrilla fighting that took place here yeah sad sad to see you can see the beautiful decorations again very similar the black and white and the domes and exiting the souk <laughs> this is what you get and what you have seen previously it was very very similar in this spot as well everything covered up but completely completely destroyed right now yeah, sad to say, but uh, yeah, <sighs> yeah, no words, I mean, there are a whole bunch of words in my head, you know, but they're just thoughts, and all I can say is hopefully one day Aleppo will come back to its former glory, because it was one of the great cities here in the Middle East, one of the oldest cities in the world and now as you can tell very few things are standing in its original shape form size <laughs> Construction is taking place here the signs of hope of a brighter future can be seen and around a hundred meters or so of the souk has been reconstructed to its former glory this is pretty much how the souk used to look like back in the day and we have some butcheries we have some places that sell spices. We have some vendors that have came back to their shop. And of course, in the souk, what else can you find if not baklava and a whole bunch of pastries? So yeah, we tried harissa, a couple of these, a couple of these baklavas with cheese, and of course, baklava with a whole bunch of pistachio so at one part of the souk towards the end they did some mobile ceilings and you know they made it into an outdoor souk so people can uh, restart their markets but once you step outside the souk the bazaar this is how the surrounding looks like yeah so yeah Aleppo the good, the bad, the ugly, just like the rest of Syria cannot avoid certain things and I have to definitely show you the beauty because there is a lot of beauty a lot of people a lot of times just see the ugly because the most oh, a lot of people a lot of times just see the ugly because the ugly is the easiest to recognize but there's plenty of beauty between the ugly so the good part is 
a lot of construction is being taking place. The Grand Mosque is being refurbished. The bazaar is being reconstructed. They're trying, you know, that's the good part. I mean, you can tell how beautiful this is. I mean, I have not seen much of Damascus because we just came through, we stopped and we switched drivers and then we left up north. But so far, Aleppo, I mean, superb homes. Yeah, super, super sad, everything that was in homes. In my opinion, homes percentage wise was way, way worse than Aleppo, even though they say Aleppo and Grozny top two most destroyed cities in our current era you know at least uh, my generation and the one before me one last glance at the citadel before heading off we are going to the armenian quarters right now to see some churches and more of the city but yeah it was a pleasure hopefully one day when i'll return at least half of what we see right here, half of Aleppo will be reconstructed. The mosque, the Grand Mosque, the bazaar, and the surrounding buildings here around the citadel. And the main town square, which is also quite, quite nice. You are English? And if you look further into the background, you're able to see nowadays the citadel. You know, back in the day, there used to be plenty of uh, houses, plenty of restaurants, plenty of hotels here. And you probably had a good view from the top. Now you can see the citadel just because the buildings, they're collapsed. A different side of Aleppo, yeah. Like I mentioned in the previous episodes, or if you have seen the first episode, there are a lot of Christians all throughout Syria. This is one of the Mennonite churches here in Aleppo. They have a couple of big churches, but yeah, all throughout, a lot of people don't think about uh, Christianity when it comes to, yes, yes, go away. Yes, yes, yes. There's plenty of room to go by. Again, a lot of people don't think about Christianity when you think about Syria, but still plenty of cities and still plenty of people even in the Muslim majority cities. squares here in the Armenian quarters completely demolished unfortunately the only two things here that have been uh, revamped one church and the mosque but yeah besides that everything unfortunately is on the ground And we are back in the city of Hama. If you cannot tell by the sound of the water wheel, you can tell it by the sign. I love Hama with the mosque in the background. So yeah, we're staying overnight here in Hama and then heading over tomorrow morning towards Palmyra and then tomorrow night we should be in Damascus. So it came between the two water mills where they have this interesting structure right here but unfortunately not anyone can come because uh, everything's closed there so you kind of have to jump a fence a couple of fences here and there so you can actually witness the mosque the river this odd conic structure here and the other windmill uh, windmill sorry water wheel i keep saying windmill i keep saying water wheel i keep saying you know what i mean Here's a special type of sweet that you find in Hama, which is like a halva with milk, but this one's a little bit baked. I'll show you guys the one that we got, which is more of a roll. And the one that we got looks more like a roll with the cheese milk. 
in the middle. And pistachios on top. As for the hotel in Hama, check this out. Yeah, it's called Orient House for a reason. More views of the city of Hama right before sunset. People are rushing so they can go and eat. They've been fasting for the full day. Well, there's a camel in Hama. So we're gonna go and visit the camel a little bit. But yeah, people are rushing so they can go and have uh, their supper. Their only supper of the day. Their, their only meal so far of the day. But uh, yeah, we've seen some sheep here, we've seen some goats. Some of them kind of rushing and some of them, I don't know, they may go into the traffic at one point. And there she is, the camel, the only camel that we have seen so far in Syria. Yeah. Looks like some kids are taking care of her. <laughs> Getting ready to break the fast here. And check out the meal that we're gonna have tonight here in Hama. Whole bunch of chicken, whole bunch of food, whole bunch of baba ganoush and hummus. This is how a green almond looks like. <laughs> if you have not seen a green almond before, and this is how it looks like when you bite out of it. Intriguing, isn't it? And this is a strawberry. And a quick look at the hotel, at the lobby of the hotel. Showed you guys a little bit the room. But this is the hotel as well. Everything Oriental, of course, as the name says. Orient Hotel in Hama. So guys, putting an end to today's episode from Aleppo and Hama. Not sure exactly why I decided to do the ending by the window. Maybe because there's a little bit of a better light. Everything's quite dim in the room. And we do have the beautiful design in the back, but really not sure why I'm giving an explanation why I'm deciding to do the ending of the video here. But either way, thanks for tuning in. If you have enjoyed the video, definitely give it a like, share, subscribe, whatever you think the video deserves. More episodes from Syria tomorrow. A long, long, long day. The long day to Palmyra and then the long drive back to Damascus but we have a little issue we have some gasoline shortages we need around 20 liters of gasoline and as you know if you have seen the previous episodes there are gasoline issues in Syria and even though we knew about it we were taken by surprise in some instances and right now we are short 20 liters but more of that tomorrow we're gonna worry about it in the following day have a good night have a good day a good evening whatever it is in your country in your state in your city good night from hama syria peace out guys